In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So is Peter the rock Jesus said the church would be built upon? That's what the Roman Catholic Church claims. However, Jesus was actually making a distinction between Peter and the rock the church would be built upon. He said, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Furthermore, when you go to the original Greek that the New Testament was written in, Peter's name is translated from the word Petros, which means a stone or a small rock, kind of like a pebble. And the word rock, which the church was to be built upon, is translated from Petra, meaning a massive rock, like a bedrock or boulder. A pebble is a stone that can be moved, while a boulder is enormous and immovable and can serve as a secure foundation. While we can't deny that Jesus acknowledged Peter, he does not say that the church would be built on him. Instead, Jesus shifts focus from Peter, the small stone, to the Petra, a massive, immovable foundation. The question then becomes, what is the rock upon which Jesus was to build his church. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. But before I do that, are you looking to deepen your understanding of Bible prophecy? If so, then I highly recommend getting the Ultimate Prophecy Study Bible from Amazing Facts. This Bible is packed with in-depth study guides, historical insights, charts, maps, answers to difficult Bible texts, and much more. Click on the link in the video description to learn more about the Ultimate Prophecy Study Bible and order your copy today. To discover what the rock the church was to be built upon is, we need to take a look at the context of Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Just a few verses earlier, Peter had made a significant declaration. In verse 16, Peter confessed, You are the Christ the Son of the living God. This statement was not of Peter's own wisdom, as Jesus points out in verse 17. It came by divine revelation. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. So the rock upon which the church is built is not Peter, but rather Peter's confession, the declaration that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God. This truth is the foundation of the church, and this is the immovable bedrock of faith. Scripture supports this understanding in many other places. For example, the Lord is called the rock in Psalm chapter 18, verse 2, stating, The Lord is my rock, and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield, and the horn of my salvation my stronghold. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, the Apostle Paul states, For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Paul makes it unequivocally clear that Jesus, not Peter, is the foundation. Peter himself, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 8, speaks of Christ as the chief cornerstone, the solid foundation upon which the church is built. Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, never claims to be the foundation, but points to Christ as the immovable rock. To claim that Peter is the foundation of the church presents several problems. For example, shortly after Jesus told Peter the church would be built upon the rock, Jesus rebukes Peter sharply for not understanding God's will. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 23, stating, Get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of man. Would Jesus build his church on someone he called an agent of Satan just a few verses later? Furthermore, Peter famously denied Jesus three times on the night of his betrayal in Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 to 75. Peter was a fallible and shaky human being. Clearly, that's not a very good foundation for a church. The Bible consistently points to Jesus, not any human being, as the foundation of the church. 
We've already read from Paul's letters that no other foundation can be laid but Christ. This theme is repeated throughout Scripture. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 20 says, The church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Even though the apostles were significant in the establishment of the early church, they were not the foundation. Jesus is the foundation, the stone that gives stability and alignment to the entire structure. Without him, the church would collapse. Now that we've established that Peter cannot be the rock which the church is built upon, let's look more deeply at what the Bible says about the true foundation of the church. The metaphor of Christ as the rock or cornerstone is a common biblical theme. In Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16, a prophecy about the coming Messiah says, Therefore thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. This passage speaks directly of Christ, who is the sure foundation. Again, the Bible emphasizes that it is Christ upon whom the church must be built, not any human leader. Let's consider Jesus' own words in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 25, where he compares those who follow him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Jesus is clear here. He is speaking about his teachings, his life, his work as the rock on which to build. When we accept Christ's words and base our lives on Him, we are building on a sure foundation that can withstand any storm. Jesus does not leave any room for ambiguity. The church, the body of Christ, cannot be built on anyone other than Him. To place any human, even an apostle, in the position of rock would be contrary to Scripture. Do you agree? Let me know in the comments down below. The idea that Christ founded the church on Peter is central to Catholic theology because it supports their doctrine of apostolic succession, which claims that the authority Christ gave to Peter has been passed down through an unbroken line of popes and bishops. This forms the basis for the papacy's authority as the Catholic Church teaches that Peter was the first pope and subsequent popes inherit his spiritual leadership and authority over the church. But this is completely unbiblical. First, as we have already discussed, the Greek distinction between Petros, Peter, and Petra, the rock, points to the fact that Peter is not the rock in question. The rock refers to Christ and Peter's confession about Christ's divine identity. Second, nowhere in scripture is Peter called the Pope or the Bishop of Rome. Peter never claims such a title. Instead, Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 through 4, that he is a fellow elder among the church leaders, and he encourages them to shepherd the flock with humility, pointing always to Christ, the chief shepherd. Moreover, the idea of apostolic succession, the belief that authority is passed from Peter to later popes, is not supported by the New Testament. As believers, we must build our faith and our lives on the true foundation, Jesus Christ. This is the only foundation that will last, the only rock that will withstand the tests of time and eternity. Consider the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27 once again. The storms of life are inevitable, whether it be personal trials, societal pressures, or end time events, only those whose lives are built on Christ will endure. The church that Jesus promised to build will stand firm because it is built on the unshakable foundation of his divinity, his teachings, and his redemptive work. Jesus offers salvation to all who come to him. If you have not accepted Jesus as the foundation of your life, I urge you to do so today. The promise of salvation and eternal life is built upon the unshakable truth that Jesus is the Christ, the Son 
of the living God. He is the only foundation that can provide true hope, security, and eternal peace. In a world full of uncertainty and shifting values, only Christ provides a foundation that will never falter. The gates of Hades, the forces of evil, sin, and death cannot overcome the church that is built on the rock of Jesus Christ. Not only does the Catholic Church have some questionable teachings when it comes to the Apostle Peter, they also make some bold claims when it comes to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Like, Mary was sinless. She remained a virgin to the end of her life, and she was taken up to heaven, where she now resides as the Queen of Heaven and hears people's prayers. Learn what the Bible says about this and more by clicking on the screen to watch my video entitled, 10 Facts About the Virgin Mary You're Not Being Told. Please also like and share this video to help spread God's word. Thank you for watching and God bless you.